home. It's all you can ask for. Um, and turnovers is really the story. How did you think Lowry looked on his first game back? Yeah, I thought he he had some some good moments. I thought he played pretty physical around the basket. Um, you know, didn't settle for a ton of threes. I thought he used his size and physicality pretty well tonight. Um, looked like he had a little bit of a burst, which was nice. Had that, you know, the drive and the dunk. I thought, you know, that first step we haven't seen in a little while. Um, you know, obviously struggled taking care of the ball a little bit. Got the ball stripped and batted away a few times, but, you know, there's some rust to be expected. And as he goes out and they have to play pretty small for mm -hmm. the second half. What are you telling your guys when they don't have a big man, a kind of traditional big man out there, and, and how do you feel they did with regards to that? Yeah, I thought we did we did all right. I mean, it was about trying to bring the right people into the screening action. Um, you know, with John on the court, we felt like he was doing a pretty good job of screening and rolling versus Kyle Anderson and, and getting behind the defense. Um, with their second group, it was a little bit more about Garza, um, Monty Morris, some of those perimeter players. So um, I thought overall our recognition was OK. I thought we had some pockets of play where we did a good job. We also had some moments um, where we really just sort of lost the plot. And we were just kind of hooping, not really necessarily executing and picking who we were trying to play against. But um, you know, it's all stuff we can look at on film and work through. Uh, Taylor Hendricks seemed to have a couple of good uh, defensive moments, especially in the first half, especially individually. What are you seeing, I guess, uh, from him individually as a defender, and then as part of the team collective, what are some of the things he can work on? Yeah, I think he's he's shown real ability to like make up ground and get back in the play. I think the thing I would really like for Taylor to improve is some of his technique on the ball initially. Um, whether that's in closeouts or in isolation, to maybe not give up as many straight line drives. But his effort, athleticism, and length continues to show itself um, because even when he gets beat, he's able to get back in the play. Obviously, that's not something we want to rely on all the time. Um, so I think squaring up the ball a little bit more is something he can do a little bit better. I think some of these blow buys, too, or there's times he gets a little too close to his the guy he's guarding or closing out to um, almost doesn't appreciate his own length. And then, you know, off the ball, I think it's going to come down to personnel recognition. Um, there's so many things that change in the course of a game. There's so many possessions where you get cross matched because of the pace that people play with. And that changes your responsibilities. Um, I think it's easy to be focused on what you're supposed to do when you're matched up with the best player. It's hard to do, but it's easier to be focused on what those objectives are. When you get cross-matched in transition and now you're guarding, you know, more of a role player, a spacer, maybe it's a non-shooter, like, okay, what are my responsibilities now? And I think that recognition will come with time. No turnovers in the second half for Minnesota. Is that, does that say something about your defense or do teams just execute well? What is that? It's probably both. Um, you know, I thought in the first half we did a really good job of being physical. Um, we did a good job with our hands and, and got a bunch of deflections. Um, obviously, that that waned a little bit in the second half, but it's a little bit of both. I think our physicality probably took a half a step back. And, you know, Minnesota without Reed, they were playing with a ton of ball handlers on the court, and so they really mixed up how they were playing. I thought. You know, I thought Finchie did a really good job tonight. So it's, uh, I would say it's some of both. Keontae ran off and hurt his hand, uh, it looked like. Do you have any idea what kind of happened there? I, I don't. I He came back by the end of the timeout and went back in. So I assumed it was probably just like a jammed finger, probably uh, the play before, you know, Mike shot the gap on that screen and they both kind of had their hands in there. You heard that popping sound that you hear when somebody's finger gets jammed. So um, that's what I assumed it was. Obviously, when he ran off holding his hand, you're thinking the worst, but um, happy that he came back. And same question about John. Do you know any more on him, what happened in his status? Uh, he has a cut under his eye. Um, I don't know if the concussion protocol thing is happening or not. I haven't gotten the final word on that, but he looked a little out of it, um, in my opinion. 
Um, but yeah, he had a pretty good cut under his eye. With the rookies getting these additional minutes in this point of the season, has anything jumped out to you? Any anything surprised or you know something you're really pleased about with these guys? Yeah, I mean, I think the the thing I love about them is they have no fear. Um, they're stepping into these games. They're being aggressive. I think the thing, obviously, that they have to continue to work on is the night-to-night -night accountability. Um, when you're playing heavier minutes, when you're in a starting role, when you're your own personal slot on the team kind of jumps up based on people that aren't playing, um, you know, the accountability goes up every single night. And I think that's the part that you have to feel as a young player you know, people can tell you all you want, but the best guys in the league, what makes them the best is that it doesn't matter where the game is played. It doesn't matter home, road, in what city, night in, night out. They're able to bring mental focus, physical preparation um, to go out there and play. And I think, you know, they're seeing how quickly these games come at them. Um, and even though they're young, fatigue starts to set in. Um, you know, people talk about the rookie wall a lot. I feel like that wall is generally more mental than physical. Just the being able to crank your brain up and prep and absorb information and understand personnel. It's just the games keep coming and coming and coming. And so I, I think, um, you know, that's the part where they have to adjust and that doesn't make them abnormal. I think any every rookie goes through that. Um, but I do appreciate, you know, the three rookies, their effort and their lack of fear um, definitely stands out. What does that accountability look like that, you're, that you want from those guys, like the day-to-day -day accountability? Well, it's execution on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, you don't, you don't get to rely on other people. You know, like Taylor, for example, he plays 28 minutes in tonight's game. Um, there's a lot of rookies that, you know, you could play 14 minutes and the responsibility is still there when you're on the court, but it's not as many possessions. It's not playing necessarily against the best guys. Like when you're a starter, you're playing against the other team starters. And so your level has to be even higher. Your attention to detail has to be even higher. Um, and it's great they get to feel that. Like everybody wants to be the man. It's like, okay, well, let's go see what that looks like. And uh, it's harder than you think, but I think that they're all extremely coachable they work really hard um they take feedback from myself and our coaching staff they take feedback from the veterans um you know i've liked the progress that i've seen from them they are all three better right now than they were the first day of the season thank you thanks thank you. Thank you.